would you be shocked if I told you you need to earn at least $115,000 to afford the typical home in the United States. Some of you may say, yes, that's insane. And some of you may say that is not a surprise because I've been saying this for a long time. So let's look at the numbers. I'm going to warn you right now. It is not a pretty picture. According to Redfin, home buyers must earn $115,000 to afford the typical U.S. home, and that is $40,000 more than the typical American household earns. They're looking at this from the standpoint of household income, which is usually what we look at for a home buyer affor affordability, and that is usually two incomes coming together in the household. Of course, it could be a single person, but typically we're looking at two incomes. So. They're saying they must earn $114,627 to be exact to afford the median priced U.S. home, which is up 15% from a year ago and 50% since the start of the pandemic. Now, this very beautiful graph, uh, don't mind my sarcasm, is showing where the incomes need to be today in order to afford a home. And you can see we've had this real big jump here in recent history. Now, uh, they're talking about how um, home prices and costs are higher because of mortgage rates being one of those things, but also home prices being higher. The typical home buyer's monthly mortgage payment is $2,866, which is an all-time high. That's 20% higher from a year earlier. And if we go all the way back to August of 2020, the typical monthly payment was $1,581. Sounds like a dream. And a mortgage rate of 2.94%. The median home price was $329,000. And at that time, you just needed to earn a cool 75 grand to afford the typical home. Much different than $115,000. It's just nuts. But what is crazier is when you look at these metros, there is a wide range of what you need to earn depending on where you live. And some of these are pretty bad, like Miami, $143,000, uh, Newark, $160,000. But Hold on, if you wanna be blown away, all you gotta do is look at the Bay Area because that number is $400,000. They're saying you need to have a household income of $400,000, almost half a million dollars a year to afford to live in the San Francisco, San Jose area. Please tell me that's wrong. Please tell me there was an issue in that calculation because that is insane. And California is not much better in other areas either. Anaheim, 300,000. Oakland, 250,000. San Diego, 241,000. LA, 237. And Oxnard, 233,000. So I will tell you, if I ever had hope of living in California one day, living by the beach, that hope is gone. I am not moving to California for those prices. Rather, I will be moving to the Rust Belt, belt where um, I can get $52,000 a year and still afford the area's median priced home. And that's up 19% from a year ago. So it goes to show where you live in the US, obviously there's a big difference. There's a big difference in the typical income in those areas and then of course what the home price is. But overall, all of this is up higher than it used to be, and it's becoming a little bit of a stretch for most people. Uh, if we look at the incomes in Arizona, so it's really hard to find up-to-date information. This was up to 2022, which is the best I can find. Uh, they're saying that the median income in Arizona is 74,568 as recently as 2022. That's statewide, but the Valley, $82,884 as that median income. I also tried to check the Census Bureau and they only have updated information to 2021 where that sat at 72940 so for the purpose of this video, we're going to use the higher number because we will take what we can get. We need all we can get here, 82,884. So let's check out what's going on in Phoenix. And first, before I get there, if this is helpful, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the like button. I'd love for you to be part of our community and watch these videos every week going forward. The monthly sales price in uh, the median sales price in the Phoenix area is $435,000. So we're going to bring out our handy dandy mortgage calculator and get a general idea of what your mortgage would be. 
$435,000, let's say you put down 20%, that's 87 grand. Um, a 30-year loan, 7.88% interest, that could be lower uh, this week, could be higher next week, who knows, but we're going to use 7.8%. And then we've got um, all of these other things over here that are estimated, property taxes, those might be a little bit higher, homeowners insurance, that could also be a little bit higher, and this is not including any HOA fees. So 2876 is the median monthly mortgage payment for uh, a me or well, that would be your mortgage payment for the median priced home in the Phoenix area. And uh, again, you may wanna consider that $3,000 just uh, to err on the side of caution and be um, a little bit, uh, round up a little bit, just, you know, because things aren't cheap. If you're paying $28.76 a month, what do you need to make in order to afford that? Or rather, at the median income of this $82,884, what can you afford? So. Let's just uh, do a few calculations here. They say you should not spend more than 30% of your income on your mortgage annually. So if you're at this 82,884, 30% of that is $24,865. So overall, if we go by this rule, you do not want this annual payment to your mortgage to be more than 24,865. So if we do 2,876 times 12, we are well above that. So obviously that median uh, income for the Phoenix area does not cover the median home price if you're going by that rule, which I suggest you know maybe staying closer to 25% of your income um, and not going above 30 for sure. So at $115,000, as they say, 30% of that is $34,500. If we divide that by 12, that means that your mortgage needs to be at 2875 in order to afford the median home price. Why they got to the $115,000 to be able to afford a median home in the Phoenix area, which is 435,000. Now, of course, if you're not looking for the median home, like a single family home, those numbers are gonna differ. If you're looking for a condo or a town home, that can be a little bit more affordable depending on the area you're buying in. And also some areas of the valley are more affordable than others. So it definitely varies. If you wanna search our MLS for homes for sale, check the description below because we have a link where you can do that. And if you're wondering what might have to change in the market in order to get these prices to start coming down and soften a little bit, check out this video right here. Thanks for joining me, you guys. I'll be back next week with a market update.